basic functions and their graphs. First we have some definitions. Um, a relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs, so points. The domain is the set of all the first coordinates, so the domain is the x's. The range is the set of the second coordinates, so the range is going to be the y's. Um, the order does matter in an ordered pair, and the parentheses is part of the notation. So first they give us a set of ordered pairs, so a relation, and they ask us for the domain. So we want all the x-coordinates, so we want 2, 5, and 1. One. All right, the range will be the y coordinates, so 4, 8, and 0. We usually put these in numerical order, but it doesn't really matter. And this was a brace. My pen is not working great there on the computer. All right. Uh, next definition we have is a function. A function is a relation, so it is a set of ordered pairs in which each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. So every x has to go with a different y. Uh, the x cannot repeat. Y can repeat. All right, so an example here, uh, this first one is not a function because one goes with two and one also goes with four. The X repeats, so this one is not a function. Uh, the next one is a function. Um, you have one, it goes with two. You have two goes with four. You have six goes with four. It is okay that Y repeats. Um, this one is a function because x does not repeat. All right, for the next one, they want us to give the domain and range. So the domain is going to be the x coordinates. So we have 2, 7, negative 1, and 2. You don't have to write the 2 twice. This one is not a function because your 2 is repeating as an x. All right, but we can do the domain. So our domain equals negative 1, 2, and 7. All right, our range will be the y's, 5, 1, 7, and negative 5. So if we go in numerical order, we'll do negative 5 first. One, five, and seven. The next way we can tell if something is a function, if we have the graph, is called the vertical line test. If a vertical line can be drawn that will uh, cross the graph in more than one place, it is not a function. So we can draw a vertical line there. So this one is not a function. Next, our parabola. Can try a bunch of vertical lines. This one is a function. A vertical line only touches the graph in one point. And our third one, this one is also a function. You can draw several vertical lines. And there is no place where you can draw a vertical line that will touch in more than one place. So every x value just goes with one y. So this one is also a function. Next we look at how to tell if an equation is a function. Uh, to me, this is the hardest one. We have a couple things we can do. Uh, if an equation is solved for y, so isolate your y, and more than one value of y can be obtained for a given x, so like you get y equals plus or minus, 
then the equation does not define y as a function of x. So you don't want to get the plus and minus if you isolate the y. Uh, the other thing you can do is determine what the graph looks like or isolate your y and put it into your calculator uh, and then use the vertical line test. Um, that is one I always try to keep in mind. Right, so hopefully you would recognize that this is a line. It is not a vertical line because remember a vertical line is x equals some constant. Uh, so we can go ahead and isolate the y. So y equals 6 subtract 2x. Right, it is a line because our exponents on x and y is 1. Um, and it's not a vertical line, so yes, it's a function. Every line except a vertical line is a function. A vertical line um, is something like x equals some constant, like, for example, x equals negative 2. That's the straight up and down line through negative 2. Um, you could draw a line right on top of it. So this is not a function, but every other line is going to be a function. For our next one, it is not a line because of the exponent of 2. So we know it's not a line. Um, we can isolate the y, so we'll subtract the x squared. So y equals 6 minus x squared. And we can make a little um, table and plug in. You want some positives and some negatives when you try that. And so if we plug in 0, 6 minus 0 squared is going to be 6 minus 0 is 6. If we plug in 1, one squared is 1, 6 minus 1 is 5. All right, we can plug in 2, um, 6 minus 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, so we'll plug in negative 1, and you have to do the exponent before you deal with these signs, order of operations. So this gives us positive, so we have 6 minus 1, which is 5. Now, we have the y repeating, but notice x is not repeating. For every x, um, it goes with a different y. 1 only goes to 5. It doesn't go to something else. All right, and you could plug negative 2. So we give us 4, 6 minus 4 is 2. The other thing we can do, and I'm going to try to pull my uh, graphing calculator up here. All right, so I have my graphing calculator up here. Uh, I have turned it on. I'll go under y equals, and I'm going to type in my function. You can only type into the graphing calculator with the y isolated. So I'm going to type in 6 minus x squared. So 6 minus your variable here, x to the second, and I'm going to say graph, and here I notice I have a parabola, um, and you could try your vertical line test, um, this one is a function. Alright, for our next one, x squared plus y squared equals 9. So it's not a line, um, someday you'll know that this is a circle, but um, you probably don't know that yet. So we will try to proceed. We will try to isolate the y. 
So we'll subtract the x squared. But to get this exponent off of the y, you have to use the square root method. Uh, remember when you take the square root of both sides, you get plus and minus on the other side. So we can take the square root to get just y. But on the other side, we're going to get plus and minus. So uh, we'll do a couple of values. This one is not going to be a function. And it's because you're getting the plus and minus. You're gonna, for every x you put in, you're going to get positive and negative. Now, 0. Um, because positive or negative there, um, well, let's plug 0 in and see, all right? So if we plug 0 in, uh, 0 squared is 0, 9 minus 0 is 9. So plugging in 0 gives us y equals plus or minus square root of 9, which is 3, so y equals plus and minus 3 just for 0. So we get positive 3 and negative 3. Just put it at the bottom. So for 0, we are getting two y values. It's done. You don't have to do any more. This one is not a function. So it is not a function. Um, if you try to put it in your calculator, you have to do two separate functions. Uh, we can do that and look at the picture. So if we do it with y equals positive, um, and you're going to use the, your square root symbol. So we'll do second, and that puts my square root symbol on there. 9 minus, use your alphabet letter here to the second. Now something you have to do here is you have to close that parentheses. This is showing that everything is under the radical. Right, and what I'm going to do is also show, also show you the negative function. So it's two separate ones. And your negative symbol is down here. That may not show on my calculator um, here. And then I'll type uh, second square root 9 minus x to the second. Remember to close. And now let's graph. Alright, there's your first one with the positive. There's your second one. So if you put it all together, it gives your circle. And um, then you have your vertical line test. Uh, but I'm not sure that we really should have done that. But I thought, well, we can look at it as two separate ones. So this one is not, and it's because we got the plus and minus when we solved. For our next one, this one, the y is already isolated. Uh, and there's only one thing over here. It's not plus and minus. So this one is going to be a function. You can try a few values. Now I picked special ones so that I would get perfect squares. So if I plugged in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. If I plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. If I plug in 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. I am not allowed to plug in negatives here uh, because say I pick a negative 5. That would give me square root of negative 6. Remember, you can't take a square root of a negative number. That gives you a complex answer. So this one is going to be a function. I will pull it up and show you the graph. So I have cleared out my y values in my calculator. Uh, square root button is what I want again. So that comes off your keyboard. So second 
and this one to get square root, you get your symbol there, x minus 1. Remember to close that parentheses that the calculator started because that's everything that goes under the radical. We'll draw a graph, and there is your square root function. You can try vertical line test, um, and it is a function by um, that test. For our next one, uh, remember you have to be able to isolate the y. Um, to isolate the y here, you need the square root method, and that was going to give you plus and minus on this side. So we get plus and minus square root of x. We took the square root over here, and that cancels out your exponent. But you're going to get two answers for every x you put in. So if you put 1 in for x, square root of 1 is 1, but you get positive. You also get negative. So your x is repeating. It's going with two different y values. Uh, you can stop there. It is not a function. Let's look at our last example on these. Um, x plus y cubed equals 6. We need to isolate the y. So I'm going to subtract the x. So I have y cubed equals 6 minus x. And to get rid of your to, to the third power, you need to take the cube root or raise it to the one third. So this will give us y. You don't get two answers when you do a uh, cube root. All right, so we can put a few answers in, and then we'll pull this one on the calculator. Um, but we did not get plus and minus here. That's important. We were able to isolate the y. So I want to get a perfect cube here. Um, 1 is a perfect cube, so if I put a 5 in for x, 6 minus 5 is 1. Cube root of 1 is still 1. Um, 8 is a perfect cube, so if I do 6 minus a negative 2, that would give me 8. So plug in a negative 2. So minus a negative would be plus. 6 plus 2 is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. And let's do, um, if we do 6 minus 7, that gives us cube root of negative 1. Um, and it's okay to take a cube root of a negative, and cube root of negative 1 would be negative 1. Alright, so for every x, we're only getting one answer. We'll put this one in the calculator so you can see what a cube root graph looks like. So we will do our y equals. I need to clear that out. I want cube root. On the graphing calculator, it is under the math menu. And cube root is one of your buttons. If you're going to do a higher root, you would have to put the root first, and then you would choose 5. So I am going to choose 4, or I could use my down arrow to get there. All right, put in my cube root, 6 minus x, close, and graph. All right, so here is your cube root graph. Notice there's no place you could draw a vertical line that hits in more than one place.